Today, I'm gonna to share with you how to create a reading list template inside of Notion. So this template was actually something I was gonna create for my blog and not for YouTube, but I didn't really have an idea for YouTube this week. So I'm gonna marry the two and I'm gonna share with you how I would go about creating something like this. So what we're gonna make here is a Notion reading list in one single database, but I'm gonna take that one database and turn it into what I like to call an L-shaped dashboard. An L-shaped dashboard looks something like this. On the right-hand side, we're going to have the main database view. And on the left-hand side, a sidebar. And inside this sidebar are going to be three different windows. We're also gonna create a nice little gallery view so you can see all of your books and their cover images. All information that you'll need if you want to build along with me will be down in the description. Other than that, let's just get right into it. So what I did to prepare to create this template, like I usually do, I go ahead and I collect some data to put into the template so you can see how it works. And this is the data I collected. I have seven different classic books here and I have some other information too, which I'll go over how I'm going to be using this. I also have a link to an icon. This is the icon that I want to use for my database's image. And I'll just show you what that looks like. It is just a book icon. The first thing I want to do is create that database. So forward slash table, make it an inline table, and I'm going to name it reading list. I could also name it bookshelf, and I'm going to open as page. And then I'm going to go to add icon to add that open faced book. I'm going to go to link, just paste that in, and it should appear. I think this looks really nice, especially with this black and white theme. The next thing I wanna do is start creating all the properties for this database. I like going in and just creating all the properties uh, before even messing with formulas or anything or layout. I wanna get all the properties down. The obvious ones, which is author or authors, and that's gonna be in a multi-select property type. The next one I want is start date. So I want kind of like a tracking element here. I want a start date and an end date whenever the user started reading the book and then ended or finished reading the book. Now I want a formula here that says time or days spent. And this should calculate the days spent between the start and end date or the days spent reading the book, which I think might be an interesting formula to have. And the next property Okay, so I wanted to do a progress bar here. This is also for tracking. I want one column that says total chapters and then chapters read. And then I wanna create a progress bar from those two numerical values. So I'm gonna change this to number. Do another one, chapters read, make that a number. And then I'm gonna create that formula property that just says progress and make this a formula. Now the next property, let's do a rating property. This one's pretty obvious for a database like this. Let's do some star ratings, make it a select property. And below that, what else do I want? I want a cover image, right? So let's make another property called cover and change this to files and media. What files and media does, it allows you to actually see the image that you're linking to within the property field or within the cell, which is really nice. If you do use Google Sheets or Excel, you can pretty easily copy and paste cells inside of a spreadsheet into a Notion database. I'll show you how. So I'm gonna go back to my reading list page. Let me open this guy up as its own page actually. And going back to my spreadsheet, the way this is set up, I have the name of the book and then the start date, the end date, total chapters, chapters read, the author, and then the cover. And that's exactly how I'm gonna order it in my database. So I have the name of the book, and then right after that, I do have the start date. So I just wanna drag this over to the end here. And then I have the end date. Perfect, that's exactly how it's laid out in my spreadsheet. So now what I wanna do is actually delete some of these. Go to this first cell, this first name cell, Click inside and then click out so that the cell is highlighted in blue. And then when I go over here to my spreadsheet and I copy all of this, paste it right in. 
and everything should show up exactly how it should. I can adjust some of these columns. We can see these covers actually, they start popping up in the cell, which is really cool. You can actually click on this and when you click on each image, you can have a full screen effect. I'm gonna go back to that reading list page and take a look at what we have so far. It looks like authors actually did not paste over and that's because it is a multi-select property and it, this spreadsheet copy and paste doesn't really work with multi-select, but I can change it to text and all of those people should appear. And then I can change it back to multi-select. Let's actually maybe focus on the layout right now before the formulas. I think that might be more beneficial. I'm gonna hide some of these. So let's create two columns and that's just by pressing enter twice inside of the page, dragging one block and just putting it next to another. I'm gonna drag this table into the column over here on the right and maybe adjust this a little bit. And then over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to link to the reading list. That'll be forward slash linked database and create a linked database. I'm gonna search for the reading list. And I'm gonna change the view to list, not table. Delete that table. And adjust it so I can see that author name. And I am zoomed in a little bit, so I'm gonna zoom out to see what it looks like. I can adjust this to go over to about here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this link database so I don't have to go through the process again. I'm just gonna duplicate. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again. So these are gonna be our three views on the side. This is what I mean by an L shape. So I'm just gonna create a new block and drag it down to the top of this column here. And this first window is going to be, just make this an H2 heading. This is gonna be books for further reading. And I could change maybe the color of this to a gray text. I'm gonna click inside the block and go Command D if you wanna quickly duplicate. I'm gonna drag this down here and this window is going to be books currently reading. Do that again, Command D. And down here is gonna be books or latest books read. To make this a little bit more flush, let's actually duplicate again. And I want to drag this over to the side here. And this title, maybe we can make it main database. Before I go and I configure the sidebar to make it functional, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the main database. So we're gonna create some of these formulas and fill out these rating options. So the first thing is the days spent formula, and this one's gonna be rather simple. So in the case that the end date is filled out, which means that the book is finished, I wanna return the days between the end date and the start date. So to do that, I'm gonna say only if, I'm gonna zoom in a couple more times, only if the end date is not empty. So not empty, I'm gonna put end date right inside. If this is the case, I'm gonna find the date between, and this is another function, the date between the end date, and then you wanna go comma start date. So the date between these two dates comma, I wanna find the days between them. And then I'm gonna create a false condition. So in the case that the end date is actually empty, I just wanna have an empty space. So I'm gonna say to a number, and I'm gonna wrap around two quotes. This will give me an empty space. Other than that, that's, that's the formula. Let's zoom out a couple times and go back, so I'm gonna go to properties, go to day spent, make sure I can see that. And you'll see that only in the case 
of a book having an end date filled out, does it give me the days spent reading the book? Which is exactly what I want. Now the benefits of having a number here is that I can go down to the calculate button down at the bottom of the database column and I can do something like find the average amount of days spent on these books, which in this case is seven, I can find the sum, I could create a filter that only shows me all of the books I read in January, for instance, and then I can come down here and see how many books I read in January, I can see the average uh, day spent. Okay, so the progress bar. Um, what I'm going to do is actually go and look for, here it is, uh, 17 progress bar designs that I created I think maybe a couple weeks ago, and I'll of course leave a link to this page I have here. Um, I don't, I kind of like this one, the block one, and I may actually use that. You know what I'm going to do? I want to use the cube. So I'm going to click in here and copy it. I also have all the formulas down in these toggles. I'm going to go back to our database and just paste this into the progress. You will notice when I paste this in, there are some properties in here, like property not found, prop red, because that property doesn't exist. So we need to change some of these property names. Instead of total chapters inside of this formula, I do have total pages. So I'm gonna temporarily rename this to total pages. And then the other one I labeled as red. I'm gonna change them back once I get this formula in here. There we go. Now it should work. I'm just gonna change these property names back, total chapters. All right, it'll work the exact same. Let's go back to the database. I'm just gonna go to properties, view the progress bar. So it looks like in every instance, only when chapters red is filled out that the progress bar triggers. So going back to this original page, I do wanna see that progress bar here. So let's start cleaning this up. I'm gonna hide days spent. I'm also gonna hide total chapters. Chapters read, I do wanna keep here because I'm imagining inside of this dashboard when you're going to add something new to the database or if you're currently reading something, it's really nice to have this chapters read property here so you can quickly input as you're reading chapters over time. I'm gonna get rid of start date. Don't think that's necessary. End date, maybe author might be um, useful, but we're just gonna keep it like this. And I also wanna see the ratings property. We actually do need to add some options to this property. First option, I'm gonna bring up my emoji list and find the star, which is right at the beginning. Cool. And I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to put five stars as my first option. Four. Yes, create. And then three. Two and one. Now that I have this, I kind of want to change all these colors to blue. I don't like that they are different colors. Go back to that database and I'm going to go to these 100% ones and put in some ratings, go back to the original page. I'm gonna sort, so I'm gonna sort this progress by clicking on the title and going to sort, and I'm gonna sort it ascending. I want at the very top of this database to be all the books the user is currently reading. Below that, all the books that the user has read and is finished reading, and then below that, all of the other books in the database that are yet to be read. I feel like logically that makes the most sense. We're going to actually separate these three types of books into the sidebar. I'm going to use some filters to do that. Going to the database menu, which are those three dots next to the new button, I'm going to go to filter and simply say, uh, let's see, currently reading would be start date is not empty, right? It's filled out and the end date is is empty. That should give us Odyssey and A Tale of Two Cities, which is indeed the two books we're currently reading. Um, I could actually go into the properties here. 
I could have the cover image. Let's do that. Now, next down the list, I want to filter out all the books I've read. To do this, I'm gonna go add another filter and kind of do the opposite of what we just did. I'm gonna make sure that the end date is not empty or the progress bar, so progress, contains the number 100. Now, as for what I wanna see here, I do wanna see the rating because it is finished and maybe the cover as well. Let's do the cover for all three. Maybe take away the author for this window. There we go. Now it really depends on your screen size, how much is gonna fit in each column and do a filter here. So this is books for further reading. So what determines if a book is not being read or is not finished? Start date is empty. Do I want to see maybe the cover image? You know what, let's put the cover just for the sake of making it look nice. <laughs> you could also probably squeeze in another property here. It depends on how long your titles are. But let's assume you are digitizing your real life bookshelf and putting them all inside of this database. This window up here, books for further reading, is then going to become massive. So we wanna minimize this over here on a side window by going in to the database menu, going to properties, and where it says show on first load, I don't want it to be 50 pages, I only want it to be 10. I can do this for all of the other windows on the sidebar as well. So if you are using this sidebar effect for really any sort of page, this is a good idea. So I'm just gonna do 10 pages. And latest books read. This list will also become very large over time. So we really wanna make sure we minimize this. 10 pages. I wanna create a sort. And I wanna make sure this sort tells me that the end date, the time I stopped reading the book, is descending. So this will give me the date that is closest to right now, so the latest books read, to the ones furthest away. I want a place to create a wish list. So this is books not already in the bookshelf or the database here, but books the user wants to buy. So I'm gonna create a database view inside of the main one here with add a view and I'm gonna create a wish list and I'm gonna make sure this is a list view. And the properties I want here, I actually wanna create a new property. One is a price, because if this is a wish list, there's probably a price to the book that you would like to know about. So I'm gonna create a new property, simply call it price. Make sure it's a number. And let's just put in a random number, go to this one, two, button right next to the number uh, property and I can change it to whatever currency I want. In this case, let's do a dollar. I want to show that property here next to the author. And how do we determine if a book is inside of a wish list? I'm just going to create a simple checkbox that says wish list. Make sure it's a checkbox. And let's say this one here, Wuthering Heights, is on the wish list. And inside of this view, I also want to see that checkbox we just made. Great. Now we just need a filter that simply says, wish list is checked. It looks like inside of our books for further reading, it says Wuthering Heights. So we want to alter that filter to make sure it excludes items on the wish list. So this is just books inside of the bookshelf. So I'm gonna add a filter that says start date is empty and the wish list is unchecked. We can also create a board view for the ratings. So whenever you have a select or a multi-select property, you can create sort of like a pivot database to a different view called board. And let's name this ratings. 
and that will give us all the ratings at the top and then all the books underneath that associate with that rating. I can hide this no rating here to make it look nicer. Let's mess with the properties a little bit. Maybe I want to see the author and also the end date. That looks nice. The last view I just thought of, we need to utilize those cover images. So let's create a gallery view and call it gallery. Going to the database menu, going to properties, I can change the card preview. So right now it's just the page content inside of the page, which I don't wanna see. I wanna see the cover. So our files and media property does show up as an image we can see through this window, which is really cool. There's also an option to fit the entire image inside, which I do like how this looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna change the card size to small. Awesome. Before ending the video, I want to create some filters. For example, in gallery, I wanna make sure I'm taking away wishlist items. I don't wanna see them inside of this view. So I'm just gonna create a filter and simply say wishlist is unchecked. I'm gonna do the same thing inside of that default view. And actually we can rename this to bookshelf. Filter, wishlist is unchecked. Great, that Wuthering Heights book is now removed. Also, when you go to wishlist, every time you create a new item, that wishlist checkbox will automatically be checked. So you don't have to do that manually. That's basically how I make my Notion templates. So let's go right into the outro. As always, there's a template down below to copy, which is exactly what we made here today. Also, all of the other relevant links that I talked about, including those progress bar designs, I will be linking down below if you want to maybe implement a different progress bar design or you want to use that reference for other projects in Notion. Feel free to do that. I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next week with a new video. I'll see you then.